Let's get into One Piece, the official translation, and some Japanese details. We'll talk about all this right after the intro. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Before, before we get into the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and activate notifications so you don't miss a thing. And well, let's get to the video. This is a new video format I want to bring to the channel. I'll cover the complete chapter, fully narrated with the official translation, along with Japanese details that often go unnoticed. In other words, the most complete content possible for this week's chapter, so you don't miss a thing. Now let's get to the video. Page 1. The chapter title is Loki of the Underworld. Right from the start, we see the term Meikai in the title, which literally means underworld. But this term is usually not used for the Eastern concept of hell or underworld, but rather the Western one. The term normally used for the Eastern or even Christian concept of the underworld is Jigoku, or simply hell. In summary, Oda wants to make it clear that we're in a Western tale here, specifically in Norse mythology. Luffy says, cool, so this is really Elbaf. We wanted to come here for so long. Everything here is so big. Loki then says, I see, good for you, but Luffy interrupts the giant, asking, will Usopp notice when he gets up there? What's up in that tree? Loki says, hey. Luffy continues, a country that's always been at war, the most powerful nation in the world, seriously? The first time we saw multiple giants was on Dory and Brogi's ship. They were very strong. Once again, Loki, getting irritated, says, hey. Luffy, ignoring him, continues, it makes sense for this to be the strongest nation. Page 2. Then, a nervous Loki shouts, Hey, I'm talking to you! After Loki's shout, we see some wolves. They snarl. Loki then introduces himself. Loki says, I am the god of the sun, the one from the, the legends of this place. Do not speak without my permission, human. Answer me. What do you think of this situation? Presentation box, cursed Prince of Elbaf. Special bounty given by the world government, 2,600,000,000 berries. Page 3. Luffy responds to Loki, what do I think of this situation? I think you got captured. Loki says, good observation, but no one is captured willingly, and I am no exception. I'd rather be free. I've been here for six years, understand? Luffy says, six years. Loki continues, I am the strongest warrior of Elbaf, but this tree is the kingdom of Warland itself, the treasure tree Adam. And since the chains are made of Kairoseki, I can't escape as my strength is drained. Loki says, hey, can I ask you a favor, Lottie? Luffy corrects him. It's Luffy. Note, both Lottie and Rody are examples of people who pronounce Luffy's name as Ruffy. Page 4. Loki says, you're a pirate, right? If you release my chains, I'll take out any pirate crew you want. I'll wipe them from the world. What do you say? Loki continues, not that I'm trying to force you or anything, but... Then sounds are heard. Clack. Clack. This catches Luffy's attention, and he says... Huh? Loki then says, oh, I forgot to mention, we are in the underworld, below Elbaf, a place no one approaches. Those who are judged as criminals are thrown here. This place is both a prison and an execution ground. Double page 5 and 6. Loki continues, if you dig through the snow here, you'll find a sea of bones, both of giants and humans. While Loki says this, we see a, a giant gorilla grabbing a tree with one hand and crushing it, showing the dangers of this place. Loki then says, the mountains here have existed for tens of thousands of years in our mythology. This place is also called the first world. A world where the sun has died, foolish human. I don't know why you came to these snowy mountains, but beware of the fierce animals. Each snowy mountain has its own master, and they have been with me since I was a child. They are my friends. Luffy says, wow, that's nostalgic. Loki then says, if you go against me, they won't forgive you. Double page 7 and 8. Loki continues. Those little ones over there are humans who decided to challenge Elbaf. Covered in filthy clothes, they survive only by avoiding the fierce animals. They're just corpses. Then, the humans say, Hey boss, there's no harm in being a bit kinder with your words. Who's this guy? Can we rob him of everything? Maybe he has something valuable. We won't pass out like last time. It's just that we didn't expect to run into the Yonko Shanks, the red-haired. Note, in Japanese, the word used here is kizetsu. The key at the start is the same as in haki, implying they fainted due to Shanks' haki. Immediately as Luffy has already tamed the animals, he says, 
What did you say? You said shanks? The humans are stunned seeing Luffy tame the animals, and they say, yes, but something way stranger is happening now. Who is this guy? He tamed the mountain master. Loki says, huh? Wait, who's this little guy? Luffy, still interested, says, has Shanks been here? Loki asks, are you an acquaintance of Shanks? Yes, he was here. You're talking about that cowardly pirate, right? Note, here's a very important line that might have been mistranslated. When Loki realizes Luffy's interest in Shanks, he calls him Koshinuke, Yelnuke, which means coward. This is a direct reference to chapter one of One Piece. The reason Luffy got truly angry for the first time in the entire story, because they called Shanks a coward. Page nine. After hearing this, Luffy becomes extremely angry and attacks Loki immediately using Gear Fourth. While the humans scream for Loki-sama, Loki narrowly dodges saying, idiot, calm down. It was a joke, just a joke. Page 10, Luffy hearing this says, huh, never say that. Not even as a joke. Loki says, damn, I can't move. Thinking to himself, damn it, I'm going to finish off this guy as soon as I get free. Luffy then says, if you can't move, then don't make me angry. Say that again and I'll slam you into that tree. Loki says, stop that, you idiot. Luffy, getting restless, says, So why did Shanks come here? Why would he want to see you? He didn't come just for that, did he? Cried, is he still an Elbaf? Loki then says, As if I'd tell you for free. Meanwhile, Usopp shouts in fear. We see Nami saying, Calm down, this thing started shaking a lot. Usopp says, I'm going to die. Looking through binoculars, he says, No way. Huff, huff. Chopper says, What? Don't tell me that. Someone is coming. Usopp says, yes, someone is coming. I don't know who it is, but he's kind of burned like he was struck by lightning. Wait a second. It must be the one behind the mask of God of the Sun. I knew it. Page 12, we see Road running across the bridge, Gerd and Goldberg chasing him. Usopp says, that warrior and the big fat giant are coming after him. They're running with the Sunny. Nami says, they're with the Sunny. What's going on? Then Zoro says, I guess I have no choice but to cut them. Usopp says, stop, Zoro. They might be the master's friends. Sanji says, we've got only one option left. The target is right in front of us. Let's get out of here. Full speed. It must be up there. Let's go to Elbaf village. If they catch us, we're doomed. Double pages 13 and 14. Presentation box. Warland Underworld. Hajrudin says, Digagaga, that's right! We caught an elk. These ones don't live in the forest. The meat is a delicacy. I can already imagine the Straw Hat crew's happy faces when they see this meat. Stanley says, it's really heavy. How are we going to carry this? It's snowing, and I can't even use the painter. Hajrudin says, stop whining. This meat is for the people who saved our lives. Note, here's another very interesting part in Stanley's line, which, unfortunately, you only catch in the Japanese version. He uses the term Taiyangseki, which means sunstone. This is a reference to Kairoseki, Heidel Sea. Notice it's written in the same way, only the first two kanji differ, meaning respectively sea and prism tower. Page 15, singing and holding the elk in their arms, they say, Let's go, we are the new giant pirates of Elbaf. We then get a quick introduction to the giant pirates. Hyruden, Captain Rode, Navigator, Stenson, Shipwright, Gerd, Dr. Goldberg, Head Chef. The scene shifts to the sea near Elbaf. Brooke says, ZZZZ, what do you think, Robin? This is the first time I've cut a woman's hair. I was so nervous. It felt like my heart was about to jump out of my chest, and I don't even have a heart. Yo ho ho. Lilith, laughing, says, Kia ha ha. You don't have a heart. That's not very scientific. Bonnie says, you look beautiful, Robin. Frankie says, what a nostalgic haircut. Jinbei says, it looks great, Brooke. Well done. Robin says, it's perfect, Brooke. Thank you so much. Brooke says, yo ho ho, I'm glad you liked it. Bragi says, gaba baba, ah! It's the same haircut you had back when you met Saul. Dory says, gig yagya, he'll be happy to see you like this. Frankie says, I can't hold back anymore. I'm gonna cry over this reunion. Then Oimo says, we remember you like this, Robin. Someone says, great, the fog has lifted. Land ahead. Well, that was the official narration of chapter 1131. Someone else says, it's huge. It's a giant island. Another giant says, once we reach the port, let's have a toast. Someone gasping says, this is not good. 
Saul Sensei, he's passed out and isn't moving. This was the official narration of Chapter 1131 with Japanese details. If you enjoyed the video, leave your like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell. See you next time, and thanks a lot.